Durham eased their relegation fears by moving ahead of rivals Middlesex on the second day of their LV County Championship match at Lords. The home side, though, at least avoiding the follow-on after a collapse. Thanks to Scott Borthwick's brilliant 169 not out, Durham had recovered from 24 for 3 to make 348 for 7 on the first day at the home of cricket and after Borthwick had taken his boundary count to 24, he was dismissed by Stephen Finn, an odd shot sending the ball to Sam Robson at fine leg. Borthwick on his way for a brilliant 176. Next ball and Finn had John Hastings held by David Milan in the slips before Tim Murtagh bagged his fourth five-wicket haul of another excellent season for him with Chris Rushworth top edging a pull to Paul Sterling. Murtagh had five for 106 as Durham were dismissed for 377. So often Middlesex have relied on their openers but both were back in the pavilion inside 11 overs. Chris Rogers nicked off to Rushworth to the fifth ball of the reply. While Robson's poor run continued as he was again bowled as Rushworth squared both openers up for the dismissals. Robson on his way for 15. That left Middlesex on 47 for two and they were indebted not for the first time this season to Milan who as ever played some exquisite drives through the covers of the Durham Seamers. Milan was to go on to complete 1,000 championship runs this summer during this knock. This was the sixth time that he's got as far as a 50 in what has been a largely consistent campaign from the left-hander. He'd needed 68 balls for his latest one and it was reached with his 11th four. When you can time and place a ball as well as he does, there's not much need for running. For just over an hour, he was well supported by Owen Morgan who played within himself but helped add 62 runs for the third wicket, all important runs for the home team. But the Irishman was on his way after making 25, Borthwick clinging on just in the slips to give Ben Stokes the breakthrough. This was not just about getting as close to Durham's total as possible. Bonus points may well yet play a role in survival, although both of these sides will almost certainly be safe if Lancashire don't win their current match at Sussex. Milan was hoping to play the Borthwick role for his team. He had this moment of fortune when he edged Stokes just past the slips as Milan moved towards his hundred. But for the third time this summer he was out in the 90s, a rather reckless drive seeing him nick Stokes behind to go for 97 with his team on 166 for four. That became 174 for 5 in the next over when Neil Dexter was out for 14 and then 175 for 6 as Peter Chase grabbed his second wicket in two overs, John Simpson legged before to the impressive young Irishman. Hastings then had Ollie Rayner held by the diving Borthwick on 8 and when Sterling was given out LBW to Rushworth, Middlesex had slipped from 166 for 3 to 202 for 8 and were in some trouble. They needed another 26 runs to avoid the follow-on, something that would have boosted Lancashire on the south coast, and so they needed runs from Toby Roland-Jones and Murta. The former has had his best ever summer with a bat in his hands, and just when his side needed him most, he produced the goods with Murta. The two not just making sure that Durham batted again next, but also adding a second batting bonus point with a stand of 74 runs. Roland Jones was denied his third 50 of the summer when he was trapped in front by Paul Collingwood on 49. And the innings was wrapped up by Borthwick, who bowled Murta behind his legs for 24, as Middlesex were all out for 276. That gave Durham a lead of 101 on first innings and Keaton Jennings was lucky to survive a King Pair when he was dropped first ball in the slips off Murta. It was still a pair for the opener though as to his fourth ball he lost his off stump to the same bowler. With Mark Stoneman nursing a sore hip, Phil Mustard opened up and he and Borthwick back in the middle for the second time in the day saw their side through to the close. From the nine overs they had, Durham made 28 for the loss of Jennings' wicket and that means that they will start the third morning with a very handy lead of 129 runs. 
They still have the upper hand and will hope to finish this game off. Middlesex have work to do to stop them.